Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this uh, slightly grey day, summer's day of um, Tuesday, the 27th of July, 2021. Yes, I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are in the world. And uh, this is your Yoga Solutions live broadcast. Um, <clears throat> So uh, yes, I I like to get questions. Uh, I I didn't um, left it a bit late to put up, but I, I didn't get any questions for this particular one. But um, I do have a couple of people booked for some free consultations later with with um, and they they got some questions. So I thought I'd um, address one of them on on here because uh, why not you know I'll, I'll st um, i'm still going to see the, the guy uh, <laughs> it's directly after this so um i thought it was a good subject and um kind of uni universal universally useful for people the uh, uh this person that's um looking for some help uh he's a tai chi practitioner and uh, he's getting knee problems and um I can see what the issue is already without <laughs> without having met him because um, uh, I, I know in a lot of Tai Chi you're, you're expected to, well, you're told to keep your knees slightly bent as you stand. I don't know if anyone knows anything about Tai Chi, but that, that's the general idea. And there's a very good reason for that um, to do with grounding and, um, yes, not, not holding yourself up with your spine. But unfortunately, that, that instruction to keep your knees bent kind of, um, the, the, you know, the quality with which we do things is, is often missed in instructions with, with these uh, physical activities. And um, the way most of us um, use our knees is that when they are bent, the muscles around the knees have to brace to carry our weight and when they are straight it is because the muscles around the knees have pulled them straight and then after time the knees start to complain and um, you know wear out basically through over efforting overuse um, <clears throat> why would that be um, uh, you might think it's a design fault because uh, when uh, if, if um, if that's the way you support yourself, if you're used to supporting yourself in that way, whenever you bend your knees, the muscles around the knees will brace against the action to carry your weight whilst you're lowering whilst you're lowering it. Uh, I'll I'll try and um, let's get some practice going so it makes sense. So um, yeah, so uh, you know. Uh, this man is uh, coming to me about his knees in Tai Chi, I, th I think. Um, but the issue of carrying weight with your knees is, is so commonplace. You know, people stand straight by pulling their knees back. And then when they lower their weight, they catch the weight with the knees as they go down. And, you know, other things have to brace. And that, that causes a lot of strain. And you can get strong at that if you like, <laughs> and get very strong at squatting, very strong at holding holding yourself in in the standing position. Um, but that inverted comma strength is uh, more resilience, really. It's resilience against your own weight, having to carry your own weight. And uh, if you've got the general idea that um, that's not what joints are for, um, then you might find another way of doing it. And Here's the solution. So it's very simple. Um, if you can give weight to the fronts of the feet, so um, we'll do a sort of standing posture with the, the, the feet not in line so we can sort of play between them a bit. Um, if you can take the weight through the fronts of the feet and not the heels, if you're used to holding weight with your knees, then you'll probably be holding weight with your knees when you're there, um, because you can. Um, but giving weight to the fronts of the feet means that you will start to get sort of proprioceptively triggered uh, balance responses from the feet. 
no that that if you if you try and stand on a foot and it wobbles that that's your proprioceptive nervous system uh trying to bring your weight into equilibrium over the feet okay and that's a function of inner and outer foot you know where you know, it wobbles from side to side if you so if you give weight to the front of a foot if you feel some bracing around the knee if you feel that the knee has to catch it's simply because you put the weight of the knee beyond the foot so my weight is traveling in this direction and the weight is underneath the, uh, and the, the, the foot is, un, is sort of behind that. So obviously the muscles around here are going to have to carry my weight. So giving weight to the fronts of the feet, the idea is to try and sort of relax away from it in space. And um, then you can rely on the sort of proprioceptively triggered responses of the feet as they automatically give you balance rather than you holding balance and those proprioceptive movements and actions will be mirrored in the knee so that the knee will have um, movements like it reacts to taking weight by catching it if you're not taking weight if you're allowing the knees to sort of relax and that um, that's a feeling of allowing them to release with the heels i don't mean put your weight down through your heels the weight stays on the front of the feet to so release with the dropping heels that that will allow you to have a lightness in your knees for a start and to explain it um yeah the the proprioceptively sort of triggered uh, balances in the feet will do have something similar go on in the deeper muscle tissue around the knees so you will be strengthening your knees but it's not strengthening to hold your weight it's strengthening to response to um, it's strengthening in its ability to respond to imbalance without having to hold this way or that there'll be tiny little things that your your intention is to simply relax the knees and if you do that um, and my general suggestion is to practice it and make it natural. <coughs> you can walk around on the fronts of your feet. Still, you're relaxing down to the heels, but they don't quite touch the ground. So they never quite take your weight, you see? And you're giving weight, you're walking on the fronts of your feet and um, you're trying to relax up in space and being on the fronts of the feet that that goes with all sorts of things it's not just the knees that will be proprioceptively rebalancing it'll be the hips so if as you do this you find yourself getting really tight around the hips and pelvis then that's another part of the problem you know if, if you take your weight with your knees your pelvis will be bracing as well to take the weight of well to try and stop you from falling over, I guess. Um, so that that's the next problem. So if you can, you want to be able to relax your knees as you walk around and in front of your feet. You want to be able to relax your hips. In order to relax your hips, you might need to let go of the pelvic floor. Now, if that happens and you start to relax your hip and you start to find your back carrying your weight, then you need to find a relationship to your feet from within. And that's um, my sort of yoga thing. That's what brings it into yoga for me. It's when we can start to relate from deep within into what we're doing. And quite simply, instead of tucking, holding the pelvis in a position to fix the spine, you take the contents in here, you, you take the weight off the spine you know the, the weight's hanging off the spine in some fashion either over off your lower back or off your upper back you know so you take that weight and you bring it in so that um, that internal weight can be given to your touch and uh, that will happen a little more obviously as you release the breath you'll get a sense of the core uh, responding so now you can leave your knees alone you can leave your hips alone and you don't have to be holding up or holding down with your back instead you're in your center 
Uh, those of you that are used to holding up um, will probably find a heaviness around the neck and shoulders. So then there's a relationship to the weight that find its way into the heart. And um, that's a relationship to your wings behind you in space, a relationship um, between the wings and the, and the face, the head in space from which you can release down into your touch through the spine. So, you know, there's the whole of the body, but basically the intention is to be able to pad around on the fronts of your feet without tension, without being tense, just relying on the natural um, released responses uh, and what, what you're responding to, what your body is responding to, is giving your weight to the fronts of the feet. And that balancing in the feet, if you, if you make sure you don't walk on the outside edges, you know, or, or only walk on the inside edges, if you, if you walk evenly, then there will be an even balancing of the proprioceptive kind of responses around the knees, um, uh, functional and evening balancing of the muscles around the hip joint and if you can get your breathing gear relating to support as in you trust the ground to breathe and you release the breath within as you give to the ground then your spine will have natural proprioceptive released responses not held and um, yeah now, if, if you've been following me and trying this out, um, come back to the position. See if you can get a lightness in the knees, in the hips, in the core, in the heart. Not by lifting it. Lifting stuff doesn't make it light. Giving its weight to your touch makes things light. Then breathe and then when you release the breath all of these joints can release open so the knees can fall back with the heels the groins can fall back with the heels the belly can fall back with the heels and the spine can release forwards from the touch of the heels so you don't get heavy the spine whatever shape you're making if the knees can release back with the heels, if the hips can release back with the heels, if the belly, the core can release back into you, the heels of the heart can release into you with the heels, then the spine gets a chance to release forwards through the body away from the heels. So you can take this into postures. And uh, none of it should require straining any of your joints, not just your knees. Okay, so that's my little sharing today. And I've done it in record time. <laughs> Usually uh, I'm sort of pontificating for so long that I only get 10 minutes practice. This time I've done the practice and I've run out of things to talk about. <laughs> so, um, I'll take this opportunity to uh, let you know what I'm up to. Um, yeah, there's uh, uh, this weekend coming. I, I'm looking forward to teaching at the World Yoga Festival. It's um, down in, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the area, uh, but it's, it's the south of England. It's, um, yes, it's not far from here. It's about a couple of hours, I think, from Brighton. Um, yes, uh, World Yoga Festival, you can find it. And uh, it's uh, one of my, um, yeah, I, I, I very much enjoy this festival. It's, uh, they're very genuine people and the people that, um, you know, all the, all the teachers, all the, all the presenters, they're very genuinely into their yoga journey. And um, so, and, and the result is, is that uh, the, this uh, yoga festival is not a commercial fest. It's not about getting um collecting trinkets and you know but uh, and they have good music as well genuine performers and uh yeah 
So it's a, it's a very nice festival and they are um, kind enough to include me as one of their um, one of their presenters. And I'm doing a couple of sessions at the World Yoga Festival this weekend coming. Weekend after that, August the 7th, I've got um, my ongoing Saturday morning retreat workshops, two and a half hours, gentle flow. Um, I haven't got a theme for it yet because it's too far away. Uh, I, I like to build my themes to do with what's going on for me in my practice, like everyone, I guess. And, uh, and I like to have something concrete, you know, something definitive that I can share that will lead to a deeper experience for people. So that, that'll be on August the 7th. You can book for that already. Towards the end of August, the last week of August, I'm, I haven't got this up on the website yet. I'm in the, busy, uh, I'm in the, bus <laughs> in the business of putting it together. Um, I'm going to do a five-day uh, retreat workshop online. Uh, five, five mornings, three hours each. It's going to be Sacred Breath 2. And the reason I want five days for it is because... Um, it, it kind of takes concerted practice to to um, get a whole picture of the body, but by dividing it up into different aspects. You know, the, the mind can only do one thing at a time, really. And um, I, 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 I do want people to learn. The, the, you know, the main, the main, my main desire behind my teaching is that people have a direct somatic experience that they can recognize as valuable. Um, my second priority is that they can, that I, I, the way I teach gives them ways to find that for themselves through their own exploration, through their own sort of desire to find better relationships with things. So the first priority is to, so people actually feel it rather than just learn it in their heads. Um, when, when, you, when you learn something about the body th through your head and you organize your practice through that knowledge, your practice is entirely limited by what you already think and already know. It's okay, but it's a very, very slow and a slow process, uh, which if, you, if you've got time, that's fine. But uh, for me, in my yoga journey, um, uh, I was desperate to get to a place of freedom because I was in such pain all the time, you know? I was in such difficulty. So um, I, I offer things that you can do directly that will lead to the freedoms that, that can lead to the freedoms that you're looking for. But um, the things that I offer you will wake up responses that are needed but the quality of your own engagement is the thing that allows you to kind of understand it as in um, you can just do what I tell you to do and your body will feel better for it afterwards but for, you, for it to be become empowering there needs to be a sort of an understanding of the principles behind what you're doing. Why? And that why question is around the quality of your own actions in relationship to the world around you. So that, that's the part that I can't do for you, but I can guide, I can remind that it's about being kind to the body. And so I've got a an intimate knowledge of what goes on in the body, uh, both uh, somatically and kind of uh, on the intellectual level via anatomy and the rest of it. Uh, I've got, I've, you know, I, I've got a way of um, explaining it to you to help the mind grasp the concept, because it's the mind, only the mind, that can allow you to do things differently. Otherwise, you'll keep doing them the same, you know, and it's the um, Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, is the first sign of madness, as they say. So, uh, and for me, most yoga is is you know pretty pretty bonkers, <laughs> um, and it's because human beings are bonkers, you know. Uh, anything that's important to us on an emotional level, there, there's a kind of um, yeah. Uh, 
there's a, there's a kind of a, a human condition that goes with it that um, keeps things entertaining, keeps things dramatic, keeps things interesting. Um, but the solutions lie in understanding that the the way that we experience ourselves through the body is a direct function of how we engage with and think about the world that we are living in. So that's the sort of broader aspect of my teaching. Why did I say all that? I can't remember. Um, doesn't matter. Yes, I was just talking about why I teach really so, and, and how I teach. So um, yes, that'll do. Oh yes, yes, I was talking about the course. Uh, yeah, end of August. It's going to be a five day um, week, five or six days. I, I might make it six days and include the Saturday. Um, we'll see. Um, yes, it's going to be a five or six day course retreat, Sacred Breath 2. Um, and I want to be able to uh, offer some clarity around breathing choices and how to do the exercise of breathing, of these breathing choices, which is essentially pranayama. Um, and what, what those breathing choices relate to um, in life, uh, on emotional states, um, situations, physical situations, and the rest of it, for each area of the body, each area that um, <clears throat> most of us have some sort of complication within. And you can divide the, bodies up into, the body up into basically sections of the spine. And there are breathing responses uh, throughout the entire body that can help, that can help you find freedom. As in, when a breathing response is related to support and where you are in space, then the breathing itself can become the source of your baseline support as you move and breathe, you know, as you, as you get on with life. And strengthening those responses, if you like, is a starting point. But then understanding their context is, is the, the, the intelligent part, is the part that the mind needs to assimilate in order to be able to apply what is learned. And uh, it, so I, I want to build it as a, as a, um, a five or six part course. I might do an intro workshop on Saturday before, that might be good, yeah. So that's going to be the last week in uh, last week in August, and um, yeah, I'm telling you about it in good time because um, I, uh, this isn't for absolute beginners. This will be for people that have got at least at least two years of Scaravelli-inspired practice underneath their belt. Ideally, um, plenty of exposure to my particular version of it, my, my way of working. So that, simply so that you're familiar with my language and um, uh, so, and be, you know, because understanding, you know, getting, being used to the way I talk about things um, will mean that the, the flow will go nicely for the course. And, and it's, so it's kind of intermediate, I guess, um, intermediate to advanced <laughs> because we're dealing with the breath and understanding breath. And it takes quite a, quite a clear state of mind and an unbiased state of mind to be able to do that. It's, um, yes, it's a tricky thing. Um, sacred breath too. It's not, not all pranayamas. It'll be pranayamas in context of life and action. And so it will be taking it into postures appropriately and that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's my intention. Um, and that's me. I, I've, uh, I think I've shared everything I want to share for this week and it's before 11 o'clock so I'm quite happy about that. Um, so until the same time, same place next week, be well and I shall, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next Yoga Solutions. All the best then. Bye now.